to everybody. I was here last year. Um, I developed a digital dash system. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of technical stuff as I did that last year. So I'm just kind of doing a recap of where I've come since last year. So. This is where the car started out. Um, we've been building it ten consulate as we built the car from scratch. You can see there's where it started out with just an empty frame. And just slowly started putting it together over the course of about, about a year and a half. And this is where it was at DCS pretty much. It was it was the computer in the car, the dashboard, the monitors, and nothing else did anything. It was just Nothing connected, nothing worked. I didn't have any control over anything. It was just a demo. And that's about where it was when I came here last year. And I showed you a little bit about how it works. So this is where I am now. So this is running in the car. It's running off the battery of the car using power supplies. Um, digital dash, uh, center touch screen, I, um, I'll go into this part here too in a little bit, but this was just uh, a couple uh, weeks ago. That was great. That was great. Um, since last year, um, I got a car title. Uh, I took it to my first car show, and I bought a house. So that's my workshop that I can work on the car in, and that's made it a lot easier to actually do my thing because not having a garage to work in makes things really hard. It, it is. I've got my 3D printer in there. I've got a couch. It's, it's great. Okay, so software rewrite. Um, I taught myself how to program to do this. I knew a new thing about programming before I started. So as you could imagine, um, the, the code was really bad. Um, I put this button up here for a reason, because every time I had a button on the screen, I had the entire code with a button on the screen, every time. So in order to, uh, with this processing program, you write it once and call back to it. I didn't know how to do that, so uh, I, I saved a lot of space on my program. I had things that were like three or four pages long that I compressed down into a couple lines just because I didn't know what I was doing. So with my software, I can now change the colors, uh, album art on Spotify, show the art on the screen, uh, and on the dash. Um, I can do the custom colors, and I haven't done a lot of new dashboards. It's, I'm still working on the rewrite. Another thing I did was I rewrote all my warning systems, because um, I had some archaic, horrible uh, code for that. So those are all my icons that I made so in the future, when I make a new dashboard, I can just put the code for one of those warning icons, and it'll work. So whenever that warning comes up, the icon will come up, and I can choose the color. I had, I had like five different colors in individual images. Now I can just do white, and I can just tint it whatever color I want. So that's my software here. I made a new screen bracket, because the other one didn't fit right, and I wasn't satisfied with it. So I made a new one. So this lights up. I can change that to any color I want. This is a volume knob for the uh, sound on the computer, because it is running on the computer. I have no head unit or anything. And these switches here, um, I can program to do anything I want. Currently, the blue ones are for the uh, doors, the uh, windows, sorry. The green ones for the lights. The red one is for hazards. Uh, this is actually yellow It'll be for the defrost, and the white one is for interior light. And those are just toggle up and down switches, momentary switches. I made a shelf rack in the back, or a <laughs> rear shelf, because I needed to put somewhere my electronics. So I built this door that opens up and made um, the back partial shelf about two inches higher with a hinged door with a strut. So you can open it up, get into your uh, into electronics and mess around with it, and then it closes. It was, a lot of people just didn't even know it was hinged, and I put some speakers in the back and light bar. And a little storage area underneath that 
This can be locked, so I can close it and lock it, and everything's underneath it. I used to have the computer in there, but it was getting really hot, so I moved it. This is my rat's nest of the wires. Um, I have my own fuse panel here. I have two Arduino Megas uh, running there for, that run the car systems. Uh, an amp, there's a uh, relay back, and uh, here's some uh, GPS and accelerometers. Uh, this is not finished. <laughs> it is it's very messy. It, um, I will be cleaning that up, but for right now, it, it kind of works, mostly. HVAC control. Um, since I don't have HVAC controls with a screen in the legs, I have digital HVAC controls. So this is my box I made. Inside the box is a, uh, a 16 relay pack, uh, vacuum solenoids, a power supply, an Arduino, a servo, and what this does is it opens up the vacuum lines and uh, opens the doors and closes the doors depending on what mode you want. It does work. I had a video of it has technical problems. Um, the only thing I haven't fixed and got working is the temperature control, which is just a cable line that goes back and forth. That's what the servo will do, but I haven't got that far um, On this screen here, um, it shows you where the air is coming out, depending on what mode you have it on. Um, so I have some pictures of it doing things here. So that would be a uh, heater. And this icon will either show the, whether the recirculate's open or not. For the uh, defrost and for max. You notice I have my vents here. They're not there yet, but they will be. They will be coming out there. I love how the client icon on the upper left shows you what, what you're used to seeing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so right. It, and, and down here, eventually, I will have a, um, I'll be able to select different climate control types, so I can do a set of temperature and, and do auto, or I can make a modern type. But this is just a stock with the crazy icons. Those are all custom made by me. So, a lot of people might be thinking, well, what happens if the door is open? Well, that air is going to be coming out of the door there because the door will be open. So when you open the door, it actually opens on the screen and shows it coming out uh, <laughs> that hole like that. <laughs> this is what's behind the screen. This is my HVAC box. This is the computer. It's an uh, Intel Note i7. Um, I mounted the back just because of cooling issues, and I'm not done with the HVAC, so I've got some open vents and stuff. And this is a little, little bit of my 3D printed control for the um, the uh, temperature door, but I'm having trouble with the servo, so it's not working right now. Here's just another view. Um, this speaker is going to be mounted upside down underneath the dash somehow. But uh, I, I'll, I like good sound in the car. I don't want to skimp and use the little tiny ones. Um, so this is the whole bracket. It connects to the, uh, the top of the dash there. And um, I don't really have anything holding in here, but it stays really solid. It doesn't move. And I have under, I'll do lighting here. So. Lighting controls. So. This is uncomplete, it's a little bit more to see a video of it running here and there. So, like the Tesla, this is what inspired me. When you turn the lights on the Tesla, on the little screen, whatever happens, happens on the little picture. So that's what I did with mine. Every time one of the lights turns on, it turns on on there. And I will have daytime running lamps. Um, probably ready to go, I just have to finish the program. Same for the interior lighting, I'll be able to change the colors of the interior lighting just by using the touch screen. Here's some pictures of the different lighting effects I can do. Um, this is 3D printed, this, um, this enclosure that holds the lens for the dome light. Um, I couldn't, I didn't want to rip out the stock one, so I made my own, 3D printed it, and you can't even tell the difference. Uh, I have 16 LEDs in this, and they're NeoPixel LEDs, so you can 
do uh, individual addressing of the colors. Uh, same goes for this back uh, shelf lights. Um, this is the headlight control. I did have a video on here, but it didn't work. Um, I have individual control of every single element on headlights. That means brights and lows. Um, I put a low high in the center position, so I can have four low headlights instead of just the two outside that most people have. And I have individual control of those, so I can do effects, I can do daytime running lamps, same with the turn signals. That's what controls it. That's behind the grill. So you can make the lights flash and different I've got it on the video. Like, you can like sync them up to music or something if you wanted to. Just That'd be harder, but yeah, I can do that. <laughs> 3D printing. Uh, I bought a 3D printer for this project because I needed to make my own parts. So this was this is sitting back there. You can look at it. Um, it's a little 3D printed pentacle. But this is a base for the LED LEDs to sit underneath the bracket. This is what holds the round uh, knob, which is a volume control. It's called a Griffin Power Mate. Um, these. Uh, we just tested these this weekend. These are uh, window vents. A lot of you guys saw these. Um, they just slide into the window and uh, they blow in your air into your car. Um, I'm going to try to make these and sell them. Um, and I want to make them real cheap, like 25 bucks. But it's, they need redesigned. And, but this is all 3D printed also. The grill over there is 3D printed. You'll see it sitting on top of the bar. Um, that's about 60 hours of printing per one. Hold it from the middle. And that's the stock emblem inside of it. So the story behind this is, is that how many people know Ken Consulate pretty good? Well, I had a car show to go to. It was actually my, set, my first car show. The other one was my second. And I didn't have my grill. And Ken lost it in the shop. Um, it was somewhere and he couldn't find it. He'd been looking for it for months. So I was like, well, I need a grill so I'll just make my own. So I designed it and printed it and there it is on the car you came and tell. Right. Yeah. I did find my grill but on a shelf from plain sight. <laughs> Data acquisition. This is something that I'm still struggling with. Um, the green areas are the things I figured out and have working. The red areas are the ones I haven't. Um, for speed, this is a, a speedometer um, Hall effect sensor. And I have it plugged right into the top of the Lambda counter. Um, it's, it's mechanically operated, so I'm still using the, um, the angle drive, but I might get away from that actually. But for right now, it, it works. Same as what calculates the odometer rings, the trip meters. I have the bolts working, and um, that's about it. I'm still working on it. it it's, it's challenging. It's, the, uh, the electronics are kind of crazy in the car, so it's kind of hard to get a solid signal. Um, and there's an actual picture of real voltage on the car. Here's just a couple more pictures, and then I'll play the video. And you can, you can see this is the album art. I use Spotify for, for all my music. So as long as something's playing on Spotify, it will show up on the screen. Uh, when you go into menu, it'll disappear. You'll see it. And uh, over here, the album art is on. You can turn it on and off, but it's on. While you're in the car on the dashboard, uh, play a video. The intro is a little long. So, this is system startup. This happens every time you start it up. It'll show uh, the Irish flag in colors and then it'll go all the blue. And you can see um, Genesis playing on Spotify because that's an awesome album. <laughs> this is what you guys have seen before, it's, but this is in the car. This is the uh, uh, the yellow mark scrolling on there, and this is the prototype dash. Still unfinished, but it, it is working for the most part. So this is what happens to turn the lights on.
This is a feature I added in case somebody's coming up behind me fast. I can hold up on that middle switch for the uh, uh, hazards and it will flash really fast. So I get somebody's attention who's coming up on me. Um, it's just a, uh, a feature that I, I, I've always think works really well to get people's attention. So this is going to show what's happening on the screen. comments below. For photos from our past shows or information on our upcoming show, check out DeLoreanWeekend.com or our Facebook page. See you in the future!